Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. I'm your host, Khadid Moedin. This is the show that we talk about all the major talking points in South African cricket, the daily show. So I mixed that one up a bit for you guys today <laughs> on the spot. Very long day, very long week so far, and it's it's been quite hectic. I mean, a lot of cricket to cover, a lot of cricket to talk about. And what's nice about it is that there's some stories that we can speak about with regards to South African cricket in general. Now... I'm going to start off with saying that you guys, 60% of you that have watched the, uh, that are watching the videos on this channel over the last month are not subscribed. So come on, guys, click subscribe, click the notification bell for all future videos. Uh, it's your time now as well to join the Patreon. Um, we have a Patreon. You can become a Patreon today. All you have to do is just click on the link. You, you basically follow us on a journey and you get special rewards, etc., from us, special shows, etc., from Click of Fanatics Magazine and the team if you become a patron today. So the link is in the live chat. And, and if you want to contribute some more, you can also get involved with the super chat. You can click the dollar sign in the bottom right hand corner. Now it's been quite a hectic week. Um, you know that the Proteus woman won their first ODI. Um, we had some hectic things happening with regards to Australia and India. We've had some amazing one-day cup action, obviously, today. Um, I wouldn't really say it's any game that you really want to say that it's one of the best games you've watched. Um, I think it was something that was a little bit underwhelming um, than what I've expected because We've been waiting so long, of course, for the game to start after the break. Obviously, some of the games got called off because of rain, etc. So everybody is waiting for cricket to start and um, <laughs> to, to see some more cricket. And we had to wait so long for quite a dull game, I would say. Um, let's just let me just talk about that first um, because we're gonna get Aditya on the show a little later to talk about Graham Smith. But I just want to talk quickly about the Cobras and the Lions game. Now we know that the Cobras have been in turmoil recently. I think they're really struggling across four formats. Four day cricket, they've struggled. They can't get a win there. They're struggling in now in the one day cup in the opening game. They they looked out of their depth a bit on that which is strong pitch. I felt that they didn't really read it as well as I would have hoped for, apart from Yanaman Milan, who scored a 60. The others looked like they never knew what the pitch was going to offer. The pitch was a bit slow. Um, I want to talk in specifically about Zubair Hamza's wicket. Um, the ball pitched on the fourth stump and then cut in. He played for it and it took out his stumps. Similarly, Jason Smith was also dismissed in the same way. I thought that there must have been a better shot to play maybe, but it's easy for me to sit here and speak about it on this side of the of the screen and not be there in Pochestron to actually witness it live. It's, it's a completely different situation. I can only talk about what I saw on TV and it's just an opinion. I don't know what's going on with the Cobras at the moment. I hope that they do improve. Um, they have some talented players. Maybe it's the, the fact that there's a whole lot of new guys that need to gel. Kind of similar to the Chelsea football team in the Premier League. All of these new players and they're not gelling and they can't get um, performances under their belt. I think something similar is happening to the Cobras. Whereas the Lions are quite a settled side. I mean, it's pretty much the same core from previous seasons. There's not much change around. But hats goes off, has to go off for Ryan Rickleton century. An amazing knock from his part. He took his time. He he was he balanced his aggression and his attacking well, very well with regards to um, when to attack and when not to, when to anchor when he lost a wicket, etc. There was some good signs from Wesley Marshall as well. Um, I thought there were some good signs from him, but I think he would have been very disappointed to lose his wicket the way he did. And of course, Dominic Hendrick, I mean, a stalwart for the Lions, um, putting in performances again and again and again. So... Uh, all around a very good um, performance from the Lions. When you, when you talk about the bowling department, it was kind of even. Obviously, Sasanda Magala taking two wickets. Most likely, Aaron Pongiso being the pick of the bowlers with two for 33. Um, got some good turn on the wicket. Um, he, he bowled quite well. And it looks like Spinney is going to play its part um, in Pochestrom as the weeks go, as the days go by, as the pitch deteriorates more and more, it's going to get slower. 
kind of like a rachi apparently that's what they've been saying <laughs> so maybe uh that's that's the case with regards to south african um with conditions i see a uh, verna saying in this in the comment section the subscriber count is picking up nicely now almost at 1.5k congratulations hardy thank you guys congratulations to you guys thank you for all the support and thank you for sharing this is congratulations to all of us because we're all in this together we are all cricket fanatics and i want you guys all to be a part of this journey um i'm not sure why jonathan bird didn't play but i know that because of calvarena leaving they needed a new wicket keeper so jean duplessis of course into the squad um, very talented player as well. Um, was in the S under 19 setup as well. So very talented player. He batted quite well today as well. But I think he just ran out of partners basically. Um, and that's about it because there was a point in the match where the Cobras really needed to pick up the score if they wanted any chance in this match. But that's enough with regards to the momentum one day cup. I'm going to bring on my friend Aditya right now. And we're going to speak about Graham Smith because Graham Smith did a little interview with the media manager of, of CSA. Asipakazi, and they had a little chat about cricket in South Africa and the state of cricket in South Africa. So welcome to the show, Aditya. Uh, always great to see you. I always enjoy speaking to you. So thanks for this. Tell me, um, from what did you take from the, I wouldn't call it the press conference, but it's almost like an interview in a way. Um, what did you take away from the video? What, what was key for you about Graham Smith? Over the 17 minutes that that chat took place, the phrase that Graham Smith used the most was getting cricket played. So that's an indication of what the priority has been, you know, even more than results. He acknowledged in, in exact words that, uh, that, you know, that winning wouldn't be the defining thing for him this season. And obviously that's in part because uh, the Proteas are still rebuilding and they're a young side. But for the most part, the priority and what has been rather stressful for him is been ensuring that, that cricket is played. Ah, uh, so sorry, there was a car that drove very loudly past that I wanted to first wait before I spoke. <laughs> so I had to wait. Sorry for the awkward silence over there, guys. There's <laughs> no nothing going on between there's nothing going on between me and Eddie Our relationship is perfect. That awkward silence was just because of that car in the area. Um <laughs> What I, what I wanted to mention about about Graham, the thing that stood out to me, I know, he, he, yes, he mentioned that cricket needs to be played, etc., over and over again, but I think we've been waiting so long for Graham to say something. I mean, the last time we actually heard from him was, I, I can't even remember, I think I think before England was the last time we heard from him, and, and we everybody's actually asking, because it's a very difficult period that South Africa's been through, and the one person everybody wanted to hear from is Graham Smith and ask him about various issues, not only the men's cricket, but women's cricket, what he's going to do for women's cricket. Now, we are going to be going very deep and uh, with regards to women's cricket for the next issue of the magazine. Um, Aditya, that, that brings something to me. If you could do, and I'm asking you on live um video here now i don't think that's <laughs> i don't know if that's a good thing but you can't say no don't yeah. feel obligated but i think what would be an awesome piece for you to write maybe is comparing the the women's system maybe to the to the indian system how women's cricket is in yeah. india or you can just maybe speak what lessons south africa can learn from because you do those pieces really well you must actually guys you must go check out his piece on what we could learn from the game between australia and india uh, from the series um win from india's point of view it's an excellent piece really really well written very good analysis well done aditya but maybe for the women's edition because we're going to be doing a full women's edition guys i don't think anybody's yeah. ever done this so guys please support us and this is why you sign up to become a patron because when then it helps us get better content and better interviews if you help us and also you guys get a shout out if you if you do sign up to the correct tier, ha, ha, ha. so what sort of what sort of um, I'm bloody lame sometimes. I don't know. I'm tired. I think I'm tired, so I come out like this sometimes. But okay, so let's talk about Graham Smith again. Let's go back to the point. Yeah. Um, Graham Smith's comments about the future that was the most important thing for me. I think because he, we he was obviously talking about winning and whether winning is important or not and saying that winning is not actually as important yes it would be great to get results but they looking to give people opportunities players opportunities 
Yes, because of COVID, it opens up the possibility to do so. But that means then that the players that they give an opportunity to join the squad should actually get an opportunity to play. If winning is not their priority, then I don't understand how we are not experimenting, especially in that number three position, finding a good number six, giving some guys opportunities, especially the guys, if, we, if we're not focused on, okay, we want to win this test championship, we want to win this 10 20 series, and we're building to the World Cup, as they're saying, then it baffles me why they're giving people opportunities that are not, that, that can't possibly be a part of the future. Because some of the selections that I've seen, especially in the T20 squad, it seems like immediate um, selections, selections that are for the now, to win now. It doesn't seem like it's selections for the future. Um, what is your thoughts on that particular comments, Aditya, that Graham Smith had to say? It looked like a lot of the selections were, were driven by logistical challenges. You know, and he, he talked he talked a lot about how um, you know medical teams had to sort of coordinate and you know set mutually agreed rules and things like that. And so um, my my gut tells me that if the Australia series wasn't happening right after Pakistan, a lot of that test squad would still be in there. And while they've listed a squad that's that's very new, um, it's hard. It's hard to see how a lot of those players will fit into the immediate plans for the next two T Twenty World Cups. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's um, that was why. But it looked like the challenges were mainly logistical, and that is why they named they named the team that they did. Mm. Yeah, that is true. Um, I'm waiting to see what what they do with regards to everything else. Because he did speak as well about a little bit about women's cricket and saying he wants to support that and increase that. So I'm very happy about that. But we're going to dive into that, obviously, in a new issue of the magazine. Aditya, while I have you here, um, there has been some IPL news um, that you can maybe give yeah. us an update on. Um, can you just maybe update the, the fans on that? We haven't really done a piece yet. I think uh, Bai said he's going to work on that soon. Um, but can you give us some yeah. update just for some of the fans so that they know what's happening over there? Yes, this is this is that period where uh, a lot of the franchises uh, make public their decisions about the players that they've retained and the players that uh, that they've released, and uh, it's not it's not always based on the skill of the player. It's it's also based on you know certain first requirements you know to fill gaps that uh, they might need to use the auction for. Mm. Uh, so some of the big news, for example, is that Chris Morris has been released by RCB. And he was, in fact, on on this show, we've talked quite a lot about the impact that he had uh, on uh, yeah. on the bowling, on the bowling of the RCB up front and in the depth. Uh, so we saw some of Chris Morris's best performances. Hardest Billion has been uh, has been uh, released by Kings Eleven Punjab. It's quite unfortunate that uh, he didn't get a game for them. Uh, but it will be interesting to see if, uh, if both those players get picked up, you know, because I think Hardest Villian in particular, his his talent on the subcontinent hasn't really been explored in the IPL as mm -hmm. it might have been, uh, you know, for the Peshawar Zalmi in uh, PSL. Uh, so I would like to see more from Hardest Villian. Uh, with that said, I guess in, in the next couple of days uh, we'll know more about, uh, you know, who's really put the uh, the hat in the ring in the auction. And uh, which of these players uh, go to which franchises? So, as of yeah. now, that's the information we have. Yeah, there was a particular comment made by a famous Indian broadcaster. I'm not going to mention his name. Um, we're saying about South African talent, maybe mentioning that. Um, I'm going to say that there is quite a lot of players that I feel that could get signed up and could get opportunity. Someone like Yanaman Malani, someone I feel should get um, an opportunity to be called up. Um, maybe a Lutus Opamla would fit in over there into a side because of his the pace that he bowls, the accuracy that he bowls with, maybe. Um, I'm not saying there might be an Indian bowler, actually, that, that can do the same job as Luto. That's maybe the problem. Because they normally go for, when they pick international players, it's normally complete superstars that can light up stages. So that's why I think someone like a Marco Mare maybe is an option. Because they, for number sixes, find that number six that can really hit the ball hard. It's something that's big. But these days, 
so many players are getting so many all-rounders that they want like all-round at five six already <laughs> because of ben stokes and what he's done so uh yeah. it's, it's quite tough at the moment um to decide which players should get a call up which should be in the pool maybe marcus ackerman um i think it's maybe too soon for a guy like jerry kutsia i'm talking about some guys that have lit up the Mzanzi Super League. Yeah. Um, Rassi van der Dersen would be an interesting one. I think that maybe he could be a person that could be in the pot. Um, but other than that, I think there's not so many that we can really talk about. Um, we got Vernie Rasmus saying over here, uh, <laughs> the best part of the Graham Smith Pencroft Prince was <laughs> in stopping the ties. <laughs> you know, I was editing that video and I was like very, I was sitting there and I was like, should I take this out or should I not? Because basically for the smoothness of the interview, yeah. sometimes I cut things so that it can just run smoothly. Um, but this time around, I was like, no, that, that's a funny humanistic side of things. So I want to, I wanted to show it. I, I wanted to show that. Um, Abai saying love to and see many new names. Yeah. And it's actually happened before. His son has appeared. You know, if, if you watch uh, an interview that Graham Smith had done with Bomi and Bangwa, his children appeared <laughs> multiple times and he had he actually had to change his location because there's just too many kids around. So yeah. So the first time and it's good. You get to see a human side of a tough guy like him. You know. Ex exactly that. Um I see uh, Corbin Bosch and Ethan Bosch are interesting candidates. Yeah. Um I don't think that they would have seen enough of Ethan Bosch to really make a decision on him. Yeah. Um the same with Corbin Bosch, I feel as well. Um Generally speaking, because the MSL is now in stars, I think it's called Star. That's your um, yeah. the broadcaster. Mm -hmm. um, they obviously have some rights to 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 show the games in India. So a lot of the players yeah. will from the MSL would be would have been seen. If I'm thinking about it now, maybe maybe a long shot would be Pais van Bouillon because of the way he plays for the um, Tuane Spartans. Um, but that's like a real long stretch for me. I think that guys like Vian Libba, maybe. I think I know he's a big. There's a lot of people that are fans of his in India. So um, yeah. maybe he could um, be one of those guys. See Abai saying, didn't know Christian Junker signed with the Cobras. You see Abai, Christian Junker signed with Borland. And because he signed with Borland, he's available for the Cobras. So that's actually what happened. He moved um, He moved provinces. Um, and that's what, what took place. Um, We've got over here for those youngsters to get picked up first. They should pick, get picked up in the Protea setup first. So if you look at the Protea setup at the moment, maybe a George Linder could be an interesting call. Um, yeah. I don't often see a lot of spinner all-rounders get um, selected from overseas, really, besides like a guy like um, Maxwell, maybe. Um, not often. There's not actually a lot of spinning all-rounders that get selected. Eh? Normally, the spinning all-rounders come from India. I think that the challenge with South Africa versus a lot of a lot of the other countries, like say England and Australia, is that I think perhaps South Africa needs to do a better job of marketing its domestic structure. It's you know when uh, when the Sheffield Shield is on, you know who's Will Bukowski's performances, Cameron Green's performances, Marcus Harris. They're all they're all over the place on YouTube. You know it's it's very hard to miss if you follow uh, if you follow. Uh, Cricket.com.au. It's it's all over the place, but somehow I don't I don't always see that with uh, with South Africa. So, and I guess that, that that's the same for the public as well. When Maxwell got picked for a million dollars, he wasn't a particularly established cricketer for, in the Australian setup. Mm -hmm. So when he got picked for a million, and that's a lot of money, a lot of a lot of experienced players who've played international cricket for five, ten years have not got that sort of money. So I guess it's uh, it's more of a, it's, it's a marketing thing. There's obviously no shortage in talent, but if a leading Indian broadcaster says that that there's a decline in South African talent, it's not because he doesn't have the eye for it. It's because he doesn't have the avenue to really see it. Yeah, that's true. And um, obviously they were... For so many years, the world have, has been spoiled with world superstars like Abe de Villiers, Jacques Callas, uh, Rachel Gibbs, Graham Smith, Mackay and Tini, so many, Dale Stein. We've had like world renowned talents that were this world class. We, South Africa, right now, trying to find that next generation of talent. Um, and that's why I think that we need to give our youngsters more opportunities to play at the highest level so that they can really show what they have. 
what they have to offer because you don't know how good a player is until he walks out to the middle to face a bowling attack of Stuart Broad, James Anderson, and Mark Wood, or of Hazelwood, Stark, and Cummins. And like, you don't know until you see that. Um, so, yeah. and, and spin attacks from all around the world, quality spinning attacks like, like you guys have in, in India as well. I mean, you only know really when you play the, the game at the highest level in the middle. Otherwise, um, we're never going to know. Um, we're just going to try. We will see how experienced guys play and then they stick around for one or two years and then we replace them again. And then this is the ongoing cycle of just um, putting in and replacing. And I don't want that to happen. I want I want guys to grow into the game. We don't have the luxury like we did before with guys that are experienced in the squad so that the youngsters can play for long existing times. Like, you know, before you could, Carlos could come into a team and have a whole lot of young, uh, older generation guys around him to, to groom him into the team, basically, you know, to let him allow him to grow. Um, when a young Quentin Cock came to the side, we were on top of the world at the time. You know, Dale Stain was there, Vern Philander, Faf Duplessis, Abel de Villiers, so many, so many young, um, great players were in that squad. Hashim Amla, of course, um, I mustn't forget him. So, we had all those players around Quentin when Quentin came to the side as a youngster. So it, it allows him to play his own game and play and find his own feet and his own freedom. And I think we need to develop that type of core again. Now would be the best time because now we've got still Faf in the system and Dean Alga in the system. For at least for the batsmen, I have someone to look up to. Then for the bowling point of view, the newer generation bowlers will learn from the likes of KG as KG grows and gets better, as all of them um, grow and get better. So... Mm-hmm. It's just, I think the, the, the bowling unit is something, it's, it will be awesome to see a bowling unit grow as a collective. Um, he says, Khalid, I don't believe there's an issue with the size of the talent pool. It's more about the learning curve for top-level cricket. It will develop the course of, of time. I'm optimistic. I'm also optimistic. Um, I have to be. And I think that with the new system, I think it's going to create more competitiveness amongst all cricket. But guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Aditya. Thank you so much for coming on the stream and thanks a lot for all your hard work that you do for Cricket Fanatics magazine and for the fans. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell for all future videos, please. To the guys that are tuned in, please get involved with the Patreon. I'm going to post the link now again in the live chat. Um, it's right here for you to see. I also did a, a preview on the website. Uh, for the Pakistan series. In there is also a video of an interview that I did with Zainab Abbas yesterday. So go ahead and look at that. You can find out a little bit more about Pakistan and their approach and their thought processes. And you can kind of get an um, insight from actually a very, very talented broadcaster and a very knowledgeable broadcaster in the world cricket. So she has a very good insight into the Pakistan thinking and uh, the team's um, makeup. So go ahead and the conditions as well. So go ahead and check that video out as well. And guys, like I said before, don't forget to like this video. Smash that like button as many times because that's the only way we get into other feeds on YouTube and we get recommended in other people's feeds. So smash that like button and comment as well and share to your friends as well. Also subscribe to the magazine. It's free. The link is on the screen and in the description. I told you about Patreon. Please go and become a patron today. Join our community. Grow with us. This platform can be your, is yours too. So we would like you guys to contribute and come along with us on this journey. Um, you'll get special benefits. There's so much benefits that you'll get for it. And we'll open up more benefits as more patrons sign on. To guys that have small businesses and are looking to promote, it's the best time to come to Cricket Fanatics Magazine right now to promote with us. As the series are coming thick and fast, the numbers on the site are, is rising. So if you know anybody that has small businesses, it's the perfect time to come and advertise with, with Cricket Fanatics right now. The links are in the description to find out more about that. There's even a free tutorial to show you how to get sales online, even if your business is offline. That was a mouthful. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Thanks a lot, Aditya. Thanks to all the fans. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Help us get to that 2,000 subscriber mark, guys. We're so, so close. Almost just about over 500 away. See you guys again on Sunday for the podcast show. For a review show, actually. Sorry. Not a podcast show. A review show. Take care, everyone. Cheers.